All right. Um, shalom. As a matter of fact, um, Shabbat Shalom and Sembet Salam. The date is Saturday, July 23rd, 2016. It's 12.24 p.m. You know, give thanks for for the woman who has travailed, I would say for uh, based on Torah for the last 3,500 years um, you know and her inhabitants doing what is necessary laying down their lives so that the virtuous woman would remain now once would say oh it's my wife it's Empress Menon it's this woman, it's that woman. No doubt, some virtue is found within all women. But it's liberty that is virtuous above all women. It's liberty that, it's liberty that one should desire to obtain. Who hath obtained her? Now, on the earth, in a governmental um, within a governmental um, context there's not a place upon earth who has experienced greater longevity in regards to full liberty there is not another place on earth that can claim to have been sustained of this virtuous woman this prized possession of liberty in no small part and due to the sacrifices of many who have fought stood up and and spoken against any opposition to its liberty defended it and in many cases suffered and most definitely died to preserve the virtue of liberty there's not a government on earth there's not a nation on earth who has experienced longer liberty outside of Ethiopia. This in itself is, is evidence enough to, to recognize the fact that obviously God, or God Almighty chose Ethiopia for something. Every, every other place upon earth has been colonized, whether colonized by the idea of pretending to be endowed with the liberty to colonize others, which in, in turn is, is uh, just confusion because like we said no other place on earth has ever experienced uh, such longevity in regards to liberty so the world has been colonized over and over but there's there's a remnant that's been preserved as a living testimony to that which has been is and although it appears that it may not be John makes sure that all works are clean, and so he splits the hoof, and he chews the cud, and thus Ethiopia no longer is Ethiopia, as it was in the days of old. You know, these firmaments, waters below, waters above, it's different layers. As soon as the time reaches completion, that work is automatically made contaminated, because then for something to be complete, that means that it reaches the material realm. That means that it is made manifest in the flesh. And the flesh is by nature contaminated. Thus, to preserve the purity, the virtue of liberty, then it must be exalted to a higher level to maintain it heavenly. And so, only if you elect, um, preserve in fullness the liberty, although not necessarily in a way that we could consider in the flesh necessarily unless you're open to to the things not seen and for this you must be chosen Ethiopia nowadays it's a tourist attraction it's, it's a joke we are Ethiopia but now Ethiopia has been elevated to a higher um, degree to a higher level and thus it's in the heavens for some time, no doubt, Ethiopia is heaven on earth, but because earth has caught up to heaven, 
then heaven is no long then heaven on earth is no longer clean and thus is made unpure by the contamination of the flesh and so heaven must transcend to a higher level of being to a spiritual um, being and is has ascended to a higher realm and thus you know new jerusalem no one can see it because it's so clear it's so crystal clear and transparent that only a pure heart could receive although it's on earth manifested through those who experience it it's not necessarily visible or accessible to anyone else thus you have the description in the book of revelation of a heavenly new jerusalem so uh i know many ones would probably like disagree with that but it has to do with the lack of knowledge lack of study and lack of faith uh i mean during these times you know 16 Hamle no 16 Hamle I think would be the birth of Lich Tefer um, 9th Hamle 16th um, July I believe His Majesty gave Ethiopia a constitution in a way he allowed Ethiopians to to he secured the existence of Ethiopi Ethiopians in the flesh although not completely Ethiopians or Imperial Ethiopians. So he secured their survival by doing this, knowing that the, that the end is foretold from the beginning and the, and the corruption would come about. And thus, once Ethiopia um, robbed His Majesty, then His Majesty had already taken the steps necessary to secure that they would not rob themselves ignorantly of of total annihilation of extinction in that if the monarchy would have remained as it was under the Kebranic, under the Fethanikist law of the kings then be sure then that his majesty stepping down willingly would have been the result the result of that would have been the extermination of Ethiopian people because whoever would have gotten on board as as supreme ruler with all control with all rule as to how to reign the territories that be its dominion then be sure that Ethiopians would not exist this very day because that has been the intention of the adversary people don't really know this Ethiopians definitely don't know this but then again they are no longer Ethiopians it is us we have been uh, scattered abroad that we may grow amongst the nations that we may be the preservants of that which is knowing that from within the corruption would be made manifest and us being from without are made one in him and thus we are what has been transferred onto our authority you know so uh where was i and i trying to get to that get to where with that is um all the constitution we did mention anyways um the fact that the constitution is amongst um, man itself then it's no longer the the um the government of god because now man gets to democratically or republicly communistically whatever can decide for themselves as to how to go about their own business which was um the the separation from the beginning that that god almighty is no longer the supreme ruler over his people for they are no longer his people they have their own constitution and they they be themselves gods deciding for themselves right or wrong this is not the government of god the government of god god reigns supreme above all and we have no choice we obey so that in itself for those that think what we say is contrary to truth should be sufficient should suffice now another breakthrough in in um happenings <laughs> this is the only time where where god himself decided to grant the people willingly a part a partnership in government never before has this ever happened without the without the sacrifice of blood of thousands if not hundreds of thousands at times forced 
to rebel against the tyranny of a corrupt government or a co corrupt kingdom, uh, you know, in, in uh, a corrupt monarchy to the point where the people have no other choice but to, to reach the pinnacle of extremity and be forced to make a move for themselves. Ethiopia is not so. His Majesty graciously, mercifully, willingly, out of his heart, decided to grant the people a part in government. Everywhere else, wars have, ha have had to been fought to get rid of the corruption that is the monarchs which reigned these places. So there's no other place in the world where where a constitution was granted as people without a revolution. So, you know, um, talk about Ras being the spiritual head of matters, preserving a people without infl inflicting sin upon them. You know, uh, Gen uh, Leviticus ch chapter, I can't even remember, perhaps 19, verse 16, 17, or 18, somewhere along that line. Thou shalt in any wise, in any, in, in, you will, in, you will, create, you will invent, you will intellectualize a way, you will solve, you will figure it out in any wisdom. You will in, you will in any wise, uh, what does it say? Uh, what's that word we're looking for? Might as well go look it up. Um, you know, it's kind of, kind of weird jumping from one language to another. <laughs> um, it gets kind of weirder as time passes by. But anyways, um, reprove something to the effect of reprove thy brethren without suffering sin upon them. You know, that scripture no doubt fulfilled. And a very powerful scripture because prior to that, uh, the first half of the verse says, Thou shalt not hate thy brethren in thine heart. So, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You know, so he granted him posterity. Okay, no, no adversary will, will um, once I step down, will take my position and exercise full, um, his full strength and annihilate you as has been the intention. But another thing is that we are the reason Ethiopia has preserved, um, liberty so long that is the extent of the love that the father had for his children Ethiopians are are subjects of his majesty in the flesh through the law Rastafari in spirit and truth if we are in Christ yes it's our black lord and savior Yeshua HaMashiach then we are his heirs according to promise by self will recognizing the necessity to, to turn to him who had first loved us and sending to us him who gave it all up for us that we may be reconciled to him in whom we are one restored to the to the being that we we have been are must be and will ever be reconciliated man in the first power of the trinity you know so the extent of that love is, is to the point where Ethiopia has, has been a living sacrifice, in a sense, chosen for one purpose, to preserve the memory that would stimulate the repentance of his people, chosen in spirit and in truth, Rastafari. Ethiopia serves his purpose to maintain and secure her liberty is for the well-being of the people through whom life even exists or life even is, is preserved. You know, it's a spiritual people who maintain and sustain existence. Otherwise, existence is of no use if there's no memory, no acceptance of he who created it for what purpose would existence serve. Uh, nature in itself just serves as an environment 
within which his people can abide in, learn, grow, and adore, and worship him. And if there's no worship, no testimony of self, then creation itself is worthless, and there's no need to continue. But if there is some of mine that I cannot deny, then it is it, it suffices for I to maintain creation um, going, to keep it going, regardless of, of what may appear to be imperfections. Our God is not an imperfect God. He's well in control of all things that are. So now, let me just, yeah, you know, um, let me just say something. This is why I've dedicated or levocated my life to repay the sacrifice that Ethiopia itself has, has um, uh, put into practice or exercise that it be possible for us to be called to something that is pure and true. And that is why Ethiopia is the most important truth that I know we must preserve because Ethiopia is no longer Ethiopia. I talk about myself. I preserve myself, my history, my culture, my truth. And quite frankly, I don't care what anyone thinks because I'm not here to convince or to satisfy the curiosities of people that are not. I am and always have been, ever will be. It's not up for debate. I don't care to, to convince anyone. I don't even care if I would be the only one that receives the fullness and truth that doesn't make truth any less true. The whole world could be wrong, you know? And in most cases, it is. So, I'm not here to make friends. I'm not, I know what the flesh is, and thus I trust not in the flesh. Might as well go into this. This has nothing to do with what we were going to present, but might as well, you know, it's a day of, of, of commemoration of that woman who brought forth uh, that man-child, the Lich Teferi, that is to rule all nations with the rod of iron. See, that's not Christ. It, it, it just isn't Christ. That, that man-child that is caught up to the throne of King David, established in Ethiopia through Solomon and Sheba, it, it, that is that. It's not Christ's guesses. It just isn't. A lot of people just can't understand that. That's not what that is. And the church has nothing to do with Western civilization. The church has nothing to do with the church, as a matter of fact. Um, this whole idea of a church is just um, nonsense. You cannot divide one from the other. You cannot divide the Old Testament from the New. It is one and the same, and there is only one testimony to this in spirit and truth. It's Ethiopia. Up until the betrayal of his, of them, you know, and betraying his majesty. So any other kind of um, so-called church has never been. When, when it's talking about a church, it's talking about a body, the flesh, Ethiopia. That's what that is. Um, you know, taken from Adam's side and preserved to be mother of all living. And then, you know, like as one thing came, it must leave for it become contaminated and... And Ethiopia is no more, because if one's turned to Ethiopia, uh, what are you going to find? Nothing. There's nothing there no more. We are Ethiopia. It, now you could find, you know, a tourist attraction. You could go see the, the Rocky churches, go take pictures with Ethiopians, go go worship Lucy, you know. So, um, but that's not what that is. You see, um, the truth will always be maintained in a, in a sphere, elevated out of the reach, or out of the reach of, of the, the evil curiosities and temptations of the of the flesh uh, one's got to understand that you know it's a, you got to keep it going just like in I, I banner I, I flag you see the line of the tribe of Judah which is symbolical of, of the kingship rulership based on the Judaic um, covenant uh, you know the Judaic form of worship that line has a cross that means that it followed Christ that means that it got with the program it got caught up with the times and it decided to to die daily pick up his cross and follow Christ that's what that means you know so now we pick it up I mean everything in, in, in scripture it's a it's like it's offices it's like Elijah first Mike must come and then who replaced Elijah um, uh, Eliseo I can't even remember the name in, in, in English but um Elijah was was replaced 
And what happened is garment fell and, and the next one took it up in office. That's what it is, you know, some fall and it makes way for others to 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 get caught up and continue on job business. So this is a clean work and this is true, it cannot be denied. So now let's see. So, but but still because it is the recognition of self, then then I and I to the fullness since the day we've been called we've our works testify to the fact that we have done everything to preserve the truth that is us, Ethiopia, in spirit and truth. We have become that body. Now, uh, just remind, just remember that what we were talking about the church, um, it, the Levitical priesthood was actually um, just a cover up while the fullness of the church, which is Ethiopia, was being um, perfected. Uh, that's what that is. You know, just the buying time. It, you know, for for a period of time, giving giving the Levites like uh, the priesthood, so called, uh, while the work was being um, uh, was being um, uh, perfected in Ethiopia, and when that work was made made um, uh, full, then that time has has ended. The time of the Gentiles. It has nothing to do with any other nations. It's got nothing to do with nations. It, it's it's a period. Uh, uh, a space and time in which the nations of the world could pretend, you know, the opportunity was was up for grabs, but it was never intended for the nations to really get with the program, thus 2,000 years of Christianity. But the, the, the body was preserved from way before, and it was called, the church was called way before um, Christ Jesus even was made manifest. The church has always been Ethiopia. It has always been that body. And uh, it's just that the work was being um, was being made, was being worked on. And the reason why no one knows this is because it was a secret for the same reasons why things must elevate and be taken out of the reach of man because man is corrupt by nature. So that's that. It's, it's very simple. It's not supposed to be something that people knew. It's not supposed to be like uh, an obvious thing. Otherwise, it would have been contaminated from the very beginning. It was a secret. It's what Jah kept in his heart. He kept in his heart what is secret. No man knoweth the heart of any other but him that knoweth the heart, and knoweth all things. And who knoweth all things but the spirit that dwelleth within the being? So that's the, the darkness. Kush it's got nothing to do with with skin color. It's the fact that it's 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 in darkness to keep you from from seeing it. You know, because you will desire that which is not granted you a portion, that portion which is not granted you. You know, because we're uh, we're stingy like that because we want everything that we haven't been given it, and we don't know how to be content with that which we have, and thus we want to take from everyone else what what they have um, received. You know, so uh, but this has nothing to do with what I intended to say. But uh, you know, I'll, I guess I'll wrap this up with. Um, might as well make a, a, you know, add to this. Uh, okay, uh, my life in Ethiopia's progress. Autobiography of His Imperial Majesty Ali Selassie I. Uh, page 295. This would be chapter chapter 48 from Djibouti to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Chapter 48. Let's see. To the Secretary General of the League of Nations at Geneva. We would request you to make known on our behalf the following to member governments in leaving for abroad, as we are now abroad. I'm busy right now. Give me give me like like half an hour. Okay, cool. I'll be ready in thirty minutes. We're going to the thing, cool. Uh, let me let me finish this up. Okay, cool. All right. To the Secretary General of the League of Nations at Geneva, we would request you to make known on our behalf the following to member governments in leaving for abroad as we are, you know, and there would be so much that we could say, but, you know, just keep that to ourselves and maybe, maybe we'll start, we'll start bringing forth uh, information that's necessary in English because, um, we don't seem to get it. And it's not that I lack faith. I, I know everything's perfect because we're not supposed to think that everything's being made manifest. We're not supposed to see. What for? That's contamination in itself. You know, I'd rather not see, uh, unless I think highly of myself. You know, but um, but still, we do recognize certain things, and many things have to be brought forth. And this is—I'm—I'm I'm gonna say it straight up. 
ones that think they're called, I don't care if you're in the line of Judas society or not. I, I don't serve the line of Judas society. I'm not faithful to it. I'm faithful to it as long as the line of Judas society is faithful to Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMashiach, in light of His Majesty, Garmak Edema Chalselasi. And I know Razia Dinos Teferri would not disagree with this. We are one mind. I know that. I don't even have to ask them. But the, 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 the faithfulness is not to the society. It's to God Almighty. So even within the society, even if you receive Yeshua HaMashiach as our Black Lord and Savior, even if you do accept His Majesty to be He who would be who would be, as we all know He is, and those of us who pretend that we don't, we, that's what we do, we pretend. We just ignore it. It's too real. It's too true. So, why did we say that? No one, get, no, one, no one gets left outside of trials and tribulations. Everyone will be tried. It doesn't matter if you say Yeshua HaMashiach, you know, Germanic Edomai Chal Selassie, and the Memphis Edus, and the Ruach HaKodesh, and, and the Holy Spirit, El Espiritu Santo. It doesn't matter how you say it. It doesn't matter if you say you accept the fullness. If, we don't, if we're not in the Spirit acting in it, we farther from it because knowing it we worse than everyone else at least other people have the excuse of ignorance so trial the, the, the testing will not just be like to other people it'll be to Rastafari and I am that testing I am that testing Jai revealed this from the very beginning you know why? so that we be patient throughout the experience knowing why things are the way that they are but I think it's time for ones to know do we really accept the teaching of His Majesty? Or, or do we continue on worshipping, you know, uh, uh, molten calves? I'm not even sure if that was the right... Uh, I gotta check it. Because I too am learning. But I'm not ashamed to accept the truth. De Cerro de Fundición. Honestly, lately I've been reading more of the Spanish to kind of like, uh, uh, you know, like um, help ones in in helping myself so that whatever I bring forth, I wouldn't have to be like, you know, like having a hard time trying to figure out what I'm reading. So I've been studying more of the Spanish and, you know, that obviously seems to have an effect on my mind. Uh, nonetheless, going forward, if the book of Exodus, we looking for the one scripture where they make the molten, the molten calf, and if I'm not mistaken... Let's see. Yeah, forgive us for this. Um, chapter. And he received them as their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it a molten calf. A molten calf, you know. Uh, but we just had to check. So a molten calf, are we still making ourselves molten calves? Are we setting up um, idols for ourselves? Do we worship individuals? Or are we, in the virtuous woman, at liberty to express ourselves individually as Jah would create it? He doesn't want, you know, a flock of, of sheep that can't think for themselves. He wants every one of us to think for ourselves the way to serve Him. He doesn't want a hundred of, of one. Otherwise, He just would have made everyone robots. See, that doesn't constitute a body. A body is constituted by different parts that are that sustain certain responsibilities and roles and, and have their own distinct um, jobs and uniqueness and they're all important. They're all one body. But do we accept this? Do we make less important one part of the body because he may not appeal to the flesh? Rastafari themselves are tried. Now, how does that connect with whatever we were saying? Well, the fact that a lot of stuff is not being told. And it will be told. But will it be received? Or have the flesh prevented or veiled us to receive? For there is no... no what is it? 
no beauty, no comeliness that we should desire. I know for sure that's in um, uh, the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53. Might as well go, go real quickly into that. Who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall, okay, let me just um, go forward to, um, he hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So has the flesh veiled us from receiving. So like I say, Rastafari themselves will be tried. And I do testify that I am that trial. Would you accept my testimony? Or would you make it any less? What I speak is true. Whether it be received is not up to me. But I do have to make it well clear that the flesh benefit nothing. And we must not make ourselves images. The images that have been made are to his likeness. And in his image, he has created us. But if we are, and we always have been, then we are not, ever will be. And how could we be now unless we were before? How could we know the things that are at the end if less we would have first been present since the beginning? And if we've been present since the beginning, then this is a true work in spirit and in truth, in flesh and in promise. Although appearances could be deceiving, but it doesn't make the fullness of it less important it's a trial you know so we're too caught up looking for the things which appeal to the flesh when we should be focusing on one body a family you know it's easy to be caught up in the same spirit yeah the spirit of christ it gets me anything i want the spirit of his majesty yeah you know i get to boast and brag but can we be one soul can we live a life sacrificed for the good of the world without any recognition knowing that we sustain the world and that as long as we are the world will be are we willing to cover up for the sins of the world and sacrifice our personal interest and collectively aim for that which is life living and causes to live are we willing to die daily and follow him the society needs a soul and needs a purpose what is the purpose but vain ambitions individual um, goals and aspirations that lead to nothing we must be one mind but most importantly if that mind is um is is um reformed corrected and the heart is in agreement then we must be one soul but the soul must be pierced to reveal the truth it'll call many and it'll it'll you know reject others it's difficult to be one soul it's difficult to live in Christ as Christ you see the society has to be Mashiach in the flesh that's what that means that means that this composition this corporate entity must reflect Mashiach on earth it must be the tool through which the will of heaven is done. The will of heaven is the will of the Father who hath declared it. And it is that authority upon upon which seat we sit. And we are the body, the tool through which our head, Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, work. And that's the security that we're not out to represent ourselves. We're supposed to represent the Christ mind, Jesus Christos, not ourselves. We're just a body upon the throne of David, upon our Father's authority. See, Rastafari, the head to give reverence to, the head to revere, he actually denied himself and he sent whom we should revere. So, Ali Salasa first did not establish himself, he's authority, but he sent to us who is to be our head, who is to be our our beginning 
who is to be before us, who we are to follow. He already testified to the exemplary character, the exemplary life of Jesus Christos, which all men on earth must do um, as, as much as possible to approximate themselves and live in living a life as closely as possible to the good example set by him. This is what makes me want to follow Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. So, but are we as a society following our own, you know, vain interest? Or do we have an agenda? Now, we oftentimes say, you know, uh, Amos 9 and 7, Are ye, uh, O Israel, are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians to me, O Israel? Say Yehovah something to that effect. Well, say Yahweh. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians to me, O Israel? Uh, then if that's the case, then would we not lay down our lives for those who have already laid down their lives, that we may be preserved? But it seems to be farther from our intention. It seems like we're after vanity. No, we have a purpose. We, have, uh, we are the ones that will transmit the communications in fullness, we will bring the, the heavenly will on earth, though which regular man cannot, phantom cannot understand because they have not received the oral tradition. The oral, not tradition, the oral truth, they, have, they don't have a connection with the Almighty. They don't have the fullness of the, of the heavens. They don't have the clarity and spiritual spheres of influence in heavenly places. Their heaven is distorted. They know not what heaven even is. So we are to be heaven on earth, bring it down, make the connection, teach people. We must multiply in love, not by force, not by strength, not by armies even, not by ammunition, not by guns. We're not that people. That's the problem. We cannot contaminate ourselves thinking that we can be like regular people. The thought of a Rastafari in spirit and truth affects all of creation. And if we start thinking that by guns we defeat our enemy, we actually make it worse because we should be better. We don't deal with that kind of stuff. We're spiritual people. We're supposed to fix the things in heaven that will rearrange the configuration on earth so that all will be well. We don't have to pick up a gun. Others can pick up a gun. It would be a waste of time. We have to pick up the Bible and start shooting the words that Jah put in our mouth, which is the most lethal ammunition. And this destroyeth any kind of grief, vengeance, negativity, any repercussion, because it eliminates the accusation of the flesh comprehending that it's a spiritual matter and thus nobody gets hurt and thus nobody is is um, infected with or contaminated with further grief anger hatred if you want to fight the fight of flesh you'll make it worse how do you suppose that by killing someone else that would make it better you just made another family um, you just caused children to be orphans you caused a woman to be a widow you broke up a family you destroyed life an employee is no longer present at his employment a friend is no longer there to accompany his his um to be companionship you know a son is lost a father is taken uh you know that's not the way and we rastafari are worse than everyone else if we think that by being caught up with that kind of foolishness is going to make anything any better. As a matter of fact, it makes it worse. It makes it a lot worse because we're spiritual beings. What we think, what we do affects heaven directly. What other people do think and, and feel, whatever, it doesn't affect heaven directly. Because they have in-betweens, they have like um, representation. We don't. We are the representation. So we could do a lot of good. But we could do a lot of wrong. Way more wrong than anyone else on this earth could do. Now, it's just a rant, but it's true. Now, we would request you to make known on our behalf the following to member governments in leaving for abroad to stop the total extermination of the Ethiopian people. We are resolved to devote our, ourselves to be a living sacrifice to offer ourselves in this mission. To devote ourselves sanctify ourselves in peace and liberty in peace and in liberty to halting a war of aggression such as it has never been seen or heard of in modern times that is without parallel and is outside the character and nature of man we also wish to bring about protection 
from Italian evil deeds and the honoring the honoring of international obligations there's a footnote as a basis of Ethiopia's ancient independence and indeed the peace of the nations of the world this is wrong not because his majesty is wrong but because erroneously ignorantly Edward Ullendorf thought his majesty made a mistake so he translated international obligations as such when it is not that this is talking about to honor my people whom have been who are interlaced or who find themselves within borders the which do not pertain to them that's to say who set up a border around us that is no border at all Italian evils the evil of Italian deeds the Vatican Rome has it not outlined the diaspora principally then we find ourselves behind enemy lines having not broken into or broken an entry we've been outlined and so we are inter nationhood we find ourselves entered into nationalities the one the which we pertain not to so we're foreigners we're strangers we do not abide and we are not considered as as um you know as uh, natives we don't belong to the nations that have been outlined to border or to shelter or to uh, enslave us so his majesty did not refer to this as international obligations he was talking about the international diaspora This is, this is the key. The footnote read, reads, well, let me just say something else. As a basis of Ethiopia's ancient independence and, indeed, the peace of the nations of the world, what would international obligations have anything to do with the independence of Ethiopia? Well, I guess you could, you know, build a case for that in, in a way. But Ethiopia's independence has never been... Um, a product of international obligation it's been the will of the creator you know just like the the Noah's Ark you ever seen Lalibela that's a representation of Noah's Ark it's in the waters above it's in the in the upper firmaments you see not by water necessarily or maybe by water because when the waters um, uh, uh, lower in their levels then Ethiopia gets higher but in the cleft of the rock the parting of the earth and not swallowing up the woman but elevating the woman safeguarding the woman protecting her as a raised bed garden of life preserved and fortified not by international obligations but by natural barriers that prevented people from even considering attacking what would be too costly and chances were it would not be triumphant it's not even worth up until technology allowed it for it to be possible to even attempt to take Ethiopia because it is so mountainous it is so it's a land like no other but when anyways what we're trying to say is that the you know the splitting of the Red Sea you know while well, the splitting of, of of um of the earth to elevate you know uh, Ethiopia to highlands and prevent it from being corrupted by by the earth below uh, they call it the Great Rift Valley there's a lot to say concerning that but not at this time so it's not international obligations that has preserved Ethiopia's independence so what does that have to do with the basis for Ethiopia's independence the basis for Ethiopia's independence is to preserve his promise otherwise the Creator God Almighty Yehovah Yahweh Elohim would have been a liar if he if he would not be able to sustain his promise he promised a spiritual people in the flesh and in truth 
something. And without Ethiopia, we cannot return to that something. I'm not seeing I'm not saying Ethiopia is that something, but Ethiopia is that that memory that sparks or initiates, activates um, energies within ourselves that reminds us of something that we are, because we are the soul. That's the body. And when the soul comes in contact with the body, it, it, it kind of just clicks. And then you start to remember things. Oh, I remember when I was in that body. How we, the children of the Most High. And then, you know, then we started coming to grips. It's just like Moses. He knew a lot of things. But it wasn't until he went back to a certain place, Ethiopia, that he was like, he learned something that I... I dare say and, and accurately that the Ethiopians themselves don't know what what Moses could have possibly have seen because their experience is granted it, to them it's normal to them Amharic is just what they speak they rather learn English but to us it's the memory of eternity and liberty from sin knowing that we are forever have been ever will be so to us it's a lot and we see something that reminds us of, of something and makes fill the void and then we can add it all up together and, and have meaning and purpose. Otherwise we don't have meaning and purpose. Otherwise we don't have a basis for independence. It's not them that the independence was being fought for, it was for us. If the basis of independence of, of Ethiopia would not have been sustained, then there go we. And it's not even about us. It's the fact that they're Goja promise. What what of the, the dispersed? Promised unfulfilled. God is a liar. He's fake. It's not true. But because Ethiopia has remained independent enough so that we who are born of her, of her in spirit and truth would be preserved a remnant lest we be like Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's not talking about international obligations. It's talking. This is what the footnote says. Which 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 should almost certainly breed will here. This is what Edward Olendorf imagines, as if His Majesty would have made a mistake. The reason he thinks that is because will is is like a like a covenant, a pact. It's like an agreement, not an agreement. Yeah, like a like a contract, covenant, pact. It's a it's a a treaty, let's say, will. So, you know, Edward Ollendorf, he, he figures, no, you know, his majesty, he wrote which, but, um, or which, but, but no, 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 definitely it's got to be will. He obviously meant will, no, because which, which means abroad, which means, it means foreign, in the foreign, it means, it, it, I'll give you this example, it's related to witta, witcha, witcha, witta, witta, to the coming out, to those that have come out, to those that are outside of our borders, but are but are from within. It's to honor those that are abroad, internationally, who are scattered. It's to honor, the obligation to honor my seed. It's not talking about international, you know, foreign affairs. It's talking about his people that are scattered abroad. If Ethiopia is not preserved independent, then I then I cannot fulfill my promise to those who I have scattered around the world to preserve the peace of the nations. Otherwise, there's no reason to exist. So through them, the lines of the earth are laid out. It's through them. As long as they exist among the nations, I have no, no intent in destroying the nations. So it's grace and mercy. I'll scatter my own. I'll make them corrupt so that when I scatter them, I have a reason not to destroy everything. This is what this means in spirit and in truth. Let us go forward. It says, From the beginning we have done everything possible to prevent peace being disturbed. We faithfully defended our country until Italy began to strike with poison gas like rain and until it became obvious that our resistance could not be continued. For if we did not resist, the result would only be the extermination of the Ethiopian people. And now we request that the League of Nations should not cease the strenuous efforts to have the covenant honored. Why would it say the covenant... See, before it wasn't talking about the, the covenant honored. Before it was talking about to honor us. That the, Ethiop that the Italian evils, or the Vatican Rome, has outlined as intruders in these make-believe um, uh, geographies. You see, 
all of the Americas belong to to Ethiopia. Why why do we think that the Atlantic Ocean not not even fifty years ago? I mean, fifty six years ago, a uh, hundred years ago, definitely it was still considered the Ethiopic Ocean because Ethiopia's reign extended across the seas. There's evidence to this in the in in the Kebranegesht. It outlines pretty clear that from Hindus Kush all the way to the going down of the sun is the kingdom of Ethiopia, the going down of the sun, us here in the West. This is his land. It's no mystery. It's no like um secret. So now now this covenant honor he's talking about how he made a contract with the with the time of the Gentiles or the Hebrew nations. Not the Hebrew nations of the tribe of Israel, but the replacement of of nation um, the nation the League of Nations, the society of, of, of foreign nations and their 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 agreement to um to collective security. Otherwise, there's no lawful claim to say that what Italy did to Ethiopia is wrong, because there would have not been any documentation, any law to to um, sustain that claim. We never promised that we would defend you from from no one. But you could talk all you want. See, that's the difference between Ethiopia at this point in time. But up until that point in time, it was God that defended her, and even through this, it was God because the nations, you know, they. They prove themselves unfaithful, unwilling to, to apply, comply to, to the to what is demanded of them. You know, so you know, blessed be he that come in the name of our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua Mashiach. You know, Ali Salasi first, Kedamam Chayv Salasi. So it goes on to say, and that it should not recognize claims of sovereignty or of territorial expansion through improper military force in breach of treaty obligations. Yerushalayim, 11th Gembot, 1928, that's to say 19th May, 1936, Haile Selassie, 1st Emperor. Here's another important detail. And that it should not recognize claims of sovereignty or of territorial expansion through, the imp through improper military force in breach of treaty obligations. Why is it important not to recognize uh, claims of sovereignty because then everyone can pretend and make lies you need two or three witnesses to sustain a claim as true let's take a wild guess what nation on earth never recognized Italy's sovereignty and I'm not saying because they're in the spirit I'm, I'm not trying it's Mexico but don't get this confused and this is where this is where the trial begins to be made very clear I'm not here to represent Mexico. I honestly don't care about Mexico. I have no affiliations with Mexico. I'm not a Mexican. Although, for certain purposes, you know, I will be recognized as such, and I, I have no problems with that. I'm in the flesh. There's a responsibility. So I must take up that identity, you know, for the sake of, of having understandable communications with individuals that are outside, that otherwise truth is outside of their reach for they are not spiritual beings but I'm not a descendant of Aztecs I'm not that's why they don't exist no more I'm not a descendant of, of, of Mayans that's why they don't exist if they were so great then we would still see them around obviously they're not here for a purpose that's not where I come from so this isn't to make Mexico any and I tell this to to, to, to everyone um, when I when I teach in Spanish, I'm not teaching to Mexico. I'm teaching to everyone that speaks Spanish. That's why it's it, that's why when I matured, it was like it's not it's a car, it's it's Espanol. I have nothing, you know. Maybe it's a car is an identity that we could relate to, but it's it's way beyond that. Not because you're Mexican, you're it's a car. It's got nothing to do with that. You could you you Satan, you Satan. It don't matter where you were born. You an enemy, you an enemy. It doesn't matter how you look. It, that should be clear. So anyways, um, but it's still important because Mexico is the one nation that did not, they did not never ever accepted the claims 
of sovereignty made by the Italians. They never recognized the occupation. That's the second witness that makes the claim to the fact that Italy's deeds are illegitimate. That makes that claim true. Now, like I was saying, the reason I said that it's not like because Mexico's in the spirit. No, because to the best of their ability, they acted in the spirit of John, at least abiding to the law. Not in the spirit, but to the highest extent that that man could could uh, exercise good behavior, if anything, at least under the basis of being true to the law, the which to the covenant which they they say themselves. We we signed this contract honestly, thinking that this would be you know a good chance to to live in peace. Why? Because we're no different than the Ethiopians. Are they're not black, not non-white, non non-Christian, non-Catholic, like. A retarded, like no good for nothing, um, regressed peoples in our country everywhere. That's what they say straight up. They're not even they're not even joking. Like it says it in documentation. Any are we not retarded like um, savage native black non Catholic um, non white peoples? Are we not weak? Are we not? That's us. We're defending ourselves. And so because they decided to go into the treaty, the covenant with that spirit, they said, we, we're, not, we're not playing games. Like, as a matter of fact, Mexico had no relations with, with Ethiopia. They had relations with Italy. And they said, F Italy. What you're doing is wrong. We're not here to defend Italy. We don't, as a matter of fact, um, we, we just kind of like exercised a pretty substantial, substantiated victory against the Vatican. You know, and it was in that spirit because they had just been raised from the dead like Lazarus. And because they were in that spirit, they were willing to suffer and die and be that martyr, that testimony. Testimony in, in, um, in Greek is, is pretty much the root of the word martyr. So if you want to say in Greek testimony, it's like saying mar mar martyrios, martyrios or something like that. So they, they didn't have a problem, they said, cause, because they saw our Lord on the cross, they said, that's us. If we, if, we, if we allow this to happen, even for our conscience sake, that's us on the cross, F that. We ain't got no military power, we ain't got no culture, we ain't got nothing. We're just as retarded and, and backwards as any African country. We're not white, we're not Catholic. Like, no, that's us. If we abandon this, we abandon ourselves. Straight up, it wasn't even like, okay, we're making this like, oh, we accept his majesty or we believe in God. No, it's just a straight up, as far as man's ability to exercise good judgment, if anything, just based on the law, that's what they were able to do. Just like John, just like John said, hey, you taking up that woman is unlawful. That's the same way. Mexico said, hey, you, Mr. Vatican dude, you know, you're thinking to be ruling what you're doing is unlawful and what happened John got his head cut off because he was speaking against the supposed sovereign telling them straight up that I do not accept your claims of sovereignty look you married your your you know you, you have uh, an illegal like um marriage so in that same spirit and there's a whole lot more to say concerning that but um but yeah where were we going with that for guy anyways uh, this was supposed to be about the the list um, book price um, and that how it's not to support me it's actually an opportunity for each one's as individuals perhaps maybe ones could um, make some money off of it I'm, I'm not asking for anything but I noticed that nobody that most people um, did not even take the liberties to even consider opening the PDF and looking into it because I got a lot of responses like oh yeah we'll support you you know we'll, we'll, we'll help you and that made it obvious to me that, oh, you didn't read the document. It's not supposed to help me. I'm not asking for anything. Um, it's, it's an extension of what we can do. We don't have money to help others. But, but hey, you know, through our account, you can get these books at the same price, at the lowest price possible. And if there be an opening, an opportunity, you might be able to make some money off of it. I don't know. I mean, it just, I'm also not trying to say that I'm, that I'm feeding anyone. But, um, so that's what this video is supposed to be about, um, just going over that so I guess we'll bring that forth um, uh, on the 4th